now it's time to start talking about television. Another of my favorite things. Um, when I was right out of school, I worked at WDAY TV and got to do television spots all day. It was quite fun. With TV, uh, you can add more than you did on the radio because you can actually show things. And what we really have to keep in mind is what we're showing. Um, TV is a visual medium. So how can you visualize what your benefits are or your strategy? Um, so first of all, you have to identify that. And um, like what were you doing on your final projects? What's the strategy? Let's say that uh, we're selling hot sauce and we're the hottest. Okay, so then you start thinking in your lateral thinking. Okay, what are some other things that are hot? How can I make this into a, um, that it really shows how hot it is? And that's how you come up with your little story as a TV. Write a story first. Okay, this guy was sitting in the thing and he did this and then, you know, and then turn it into a script because then you know you'll have a good, something that's interesting people want to, um, want to follow. What's the big idea you want to get across? Again, that's the hot thing. That's the cold, we're the coldest, we're the softest, we're whatever you have chosen to be your strategy. Um, what's the benefit of that big idea and whom does it benefit? Okay, so we're thinking again about our target. So if you're doing a television spot and you're targeting the elderly, then of course you're not going to show a 17-year-old guy in there. You need to really be cognizant all the time of what you're showing and, and who your target is. And then finally, how can you turn that benefit into a visual element? How do we show it? How can we show that benefit? The term that we use is visualize the benefit. So first of all, what is the benefit? Step two, how can I show it? And step three is kind of in an unexpected way because you will see a lot of commercials that don't have anything unexpected about them. So again, to me, that's kind of the lazy way to do it. And it depends on your product, too. Sometimes we have what we call parody products, and it means one's not really any better than the other. And so you can't really demonstrate on television why one's better than the other, because they're not. And that complicates thing, things. But if you have a product where you can demonstrate, you can show people why it's better then you really want to do that. It doesn't mean you can't be have something unexpected or a little twist at the end or something because you can always do that. And that's what I always want you to try to do so that we don't just get to the um, boring old TV spots that really don't use television the way it should be used. Here are some different formats for television. Uh, demonstration. That means you just show them. Show them how to use it. Show them what uh, works well and... Um, Show them how good it works. Put something in there. Um, before and after is more, okay, here's this person before they used our product. Here's this person after. Where the teeth are whiter or the hair is better or something. If you have that in a product and you can do that, that's a great way to, um, to sell it. Side by side is showing your product and then the competitors on the other side and showing them both at work and showing how much better yours is doing if you have that kind of option. And by non-users, I just mean show what will happen if you don't use it. So that's kind of the backwards thinking again. You can come up with some outrageous um, situations if they don't use your product. And then the other um, ways are, um, are more little stories. A vignette, again, the same as radio, is a bunch of little things that have something in common. You just show you show different things, but they all, like ice, in radio, like ice cream, or they all something that ties them together. A slice of life is uh, just simply that makes simply a uh, story that makes the viewer go, oh, and that could be a cute kid, can be puppies. Somehow you bring your product into that little story and um, show how it fits into life. A presenter is like, for example, having a doctor um, selling some kind of pharmacy thing. So somebody with that people respect. Um, and a testimonial is people using 
uh, who use that product saying, I use it and I like it. Now that can be a celebrity or it can be just be a nobody, but um, they're recommending the product. And story, um, most of these other things are stories too, but a story has a beginning, some kind of conflict, and then an ending to the conflict. And we all like stories. And believe me, it's not easy to do a story in 30 seconds. It's a lot tougher. Now, here are some of the camera shots. When you are writing a television script, you not only have to say then what the audio is, like we did on radio, but now we have to say what the video is, so what are we showing, and then we also have to give the camera and the editor instructions. So the first is the camera shots, and here's the abbreviations that you use. Extreme close-up is, uh, like, let's use a person for an example. Maybe we just show the person's smile. That's extreme. It's right, right in there. Close up would be showing the whole head. Medium shot is waist up and long shot is the whole body. If it were a car, the same thing. Start extreme close up would be like the key lock. And then you would see like the window and you keep going farther out. Medium shot, you would maybe see most of the car and plus some of the background. So you got to tell the camera what to do. Other things, the camera, movie, the camera. You can zoom in or out, so that means the camera's moving closer to the person or getting farther away from the person. A dolly in or out is, um, how do I like to describe that? Um, a dolly just means the whole camera moves, not just the zoom lens, but you actually walk the camera closer. And it's a different type of shot, or out means you walk the camera farther away. Usually they put these on rails so that you're not bumpy, so it looks like it's just moving away. They make dolly shots that are curved. If you've ever seen um, a shot where the person is standing there but the background tent is moving behind them even though they're standing still, that's a curved dolly shot. So the camera's moving, the person's standing still. A pan is simply turning the camera to the right or turning it to the left. Um, a tilt is when it goes up and down, but all of these things, if you have your camera on a, uh, um, a tripod, you can go up and down, you can go in and out, um, so pan, you tell the camera, pan right, pan left, tilt up, tilt down. A boom and a crane, they are just uh, bigger kinds of tilts. A boom is like a huge arm with a camera on, so it can go way straight up or down. Um, it can go sideways, too. Um, a crane is even bigger. You know how big cranes are here. And then we have, besides telling the camera what to do, we need to tell the um, editor what to do between shots. Are you just going to go cut from one shot straight to another one? Which is fine. A dissolve, you know what that means, just slowly fade one in and fade one out. And then a fade is going to black. So it just slowly, the picture slowly goes away to black. Now all of these things have different personalities to them, and so there's a reason why you might cut and there's a reason why you might dissolve. Um, cut tends to be faster, um, a lot of shots in a hurry, um, high energy, you go fast. Dissolve is more emotion, soft, flowing, depending on you know what, what mood you're trying to achieve in there. And a fade is usually what we do we fade from the picture to black. Maybe we want to put the logo at the end, so first we fade out. It's fade out and fade in. You fade in at the beginning, usually from black. Uh, and the reason you do this, and you probably haven't really thought about this, but when you're watching one commercial and then another one starts up, your brain just needs a little tiny bit of time to say, okay, we're switching here. It's not very much. It's like a half second. But if you do video all the way up to the end and then the person on the next ad starts it right away, it's like instant and it's really confusing and jumbling. So you try to fade out at 29 and a half to black and then if the other person fades in from black or the next ad, then you have a nice little time for your brain to know that something um, is going to happen. So that's what, how the fade is used. So you need to also talk about transitions then. 
and in your audio. Just like we use sound effects in the radio, you should use sound effects on television too. Because uh, let's say that you're shooting in a jungle or something. Your camera audio just doesn't pick up the sounds very well. And so you would probably replace that audio with um, sound effects of that because then you can make them much more real uh, um, and it's much more effective to use those. Uh, a voiceover um, just means that's what your announcer will say. Now there could be people talking and the announcer just comes at the end to say something. It can just be people talking with, or it can just be the announcer talking all the way through. Um, or it can be neither. Some commercials have no audio whatsoever. And they use that on purpose for effect. So you need to figure out, just like in radio, okay, who is my announcer? Does he have an accent? Is it a woman or a man? Who should it be? Be thoughtful about who that announcer is. Music plays a, a way more important role on television because it can really be used to set the mood, um, to add energy, to become more memorable through the music. So think about the music too. You can, um, the, in sound effects, many times you can buy just background music, so it's 30 seconds of whatever, the kind of emotion that you want to do there. Um, and so there are places where you can uh, buy those 30 second tracks too for under your TV spots. Most uh, television stations have them and they'll just let you use it, but otherwise you have to buy it. Okay, now, oh my gosh, look at all this. These are some examples, and I would like you to go to these, and I'm not sure if you can pick them up um, from this or not. I don't want you to have to write them all out. So I think what I'll do is that I'll just put this file, um, I'll email this file to you also, so that maybe then you can click on them and go straight there. But try to... Um, uh, Look at what this is an example of before you go there. So the first one, before and after. It shows some um, um, lady vacuuming in the old days and now. Uh, that's a before and after. Before even, They started with after on this one, then went to before, but it's the same thing. So uh, a non-user story. Okay, what happens if you don't use our product? Which is really just backwards thinking again. And this next example is shows the product in use. It's also a product as star, and also is a vignette. There's another typo. Hmm. Jody has to learn how to proof, just like you all do. Uh, slice of life again. I told you it's just a kind of a nice little thing. Um, Cheerios has been doing slice of life forever, and these are both examples of Cheerios spots. Um, product in use. Can you show the product and how it's used? Testimonial, have somebody talk about it, famous or unfamous. And um, the whole unexpected thing, this is just an example of something unexpected where the whole commercial sets you up to expect one thing and then at the end it's something totally different. That's really what we need to work for. How do we leave them surprised? or do something that they weren't expecting. Now these examples that I give you, some of them don't do that. In fact, many of them are old and outdated, but they still were good examples, so I used them anyway. I mean, Grecian formula. Um, but you um, will get to know these a little bit better this way so that you can start recognizing them as you um, watch television. And that's one thing about writing TV too. Start watching it and start thinking about the different types of commercials. What did they use? What creative technique did they use? Ah, that's backwards thinking. Um, oh, that's the before and after. And if you can kind of get these ingrained in your head, then you kind of keep learning even after we're long done with this class where you're just watching the ads and, and being interested in them. So the idea is go to these. This is going to be um, your proof that um, you did this. And um, just write me down the client for each one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. Um, so like number one, just write down blah, blah, vacuum cleaners. Number two, 
Cheerios. That's all I need from you. It's not a thinking. It's just to prove to me that you actually looked at these because I'd like you to kind of be able to um, identify the difference between a slice of life and a before and after is all. So um, that's it for TV. Have fun with your assignments. Bye.